Doing something a little different tonight. I got some boys on to talk some fantasy hockey. Uh, the first um, the first two weeks of the season, which I don't know if it's the same in every Yahoo, but for ours, it was just one week of the season. It was pretty well bananas. So I brought on Michael Drover, Chris Late, Tristan Woodworth Linus. Welcome, boys. Yo. 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 Hey. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> Okay. Thanks for cool. thanks for gifting. Oh, you gave uh, that's Conron. You gave that to he. I play uh, I play chill with him. Oh yeah, is he be good? He is. He's good hand. House champ. Uh, well, you know, I've been playing those NHL tournaments. Well, I played one, and uh, I got smoked in the last one I played. And I was gonna play one this past weekend, but it turns out uh, I actually had class then. So I twelve dollars entered tournament for nothing. <laughs> Tristan, you know I'm still the house champ, right? In your dreams. <laughs> Only in the house with Stephanie. That's yeah, all I yeah, gotta say. Yeah, disputed. Only house that you're champion disputed. of is yours and Stephanie. It's fake news. Real. If this was on Twitter, there would be a warning label underneath. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Tell you what. You must have concussion syndrome or something, man. Yeah. <laughs> the memories memories are gone. Oh, no. Anyway, like anyway that. let's not get off topic. <laughs> yeah, before we even get on. Um, so first off, like what's uh what's everyone's what's the biggest surprise for everyone so far? Because the first week, like I think for me, just like nothing is reliable this season because of coronavirus. So many games get postponed. Like you gotta be more willing than ever to like have a swing slot or pick up a third goalie. Like it's just bananas out there. I think the big thing for me was Patrick Laine and uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois wanting to get out of the crappiest towns in the NHL and go into the Yeah, one of my favorite. The, the best part about that is they traded them to each other. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure Patrick Laine, who wanted to go to somewhere that had an actual centerman and wanted to go to a large market city, was going to love Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> With yeah, Torts. Exactly. Him and Torts yeah. going to get along real yeah, good, yeah. I bet. Ohio's like fourth best city or whatever. I think that's I borrowed that joke from Chris, I believe. <laughs> hey, yeah, Jamie. Columbus. So yeah. so Columbus like what who gets the best <laughs> of that? I mean, fantasy wise, like Line A is probably the more relevant player. But I Dubois so. makes Winnipeg real solid. Yeah, I think a, getting an elite centerman is always more valuable than getting an elite winger. And Dubois had the stuff. You're talking last fantasy. Year. It's different, though. If you're talking fantasy, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, a good centerman can have a big impact on line. Very true. And team in general. Oh, Winnipeg are nasty up the middle right now. Who One do of the I strongest think... in the middle in the league. Who do I think won that trade? I think the fans won that trade because we're all going to have a good laugh about it for the next six months going, ha, 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 a bunch oh, of more. Assholes. They're associated <laughs> with each other forever now. Well, they. Here's a piece of trivia. Um, where uh, Pierre Luc Dubois was drafted the same year as Austin Matthews and Patrick Laine. Where was he drafted in that draft? Uh, Seventeen. Uh, I don't know. Third, right Third, behind yeah, Patrick Laine. So. Oh, that you don't yeah. think about him as being like you don't remember hearing about him. I knew his first rounder. That's it. He was um, always a highly touted prospect, like right behind the two big boys. But you know, Line's just got them shots. Yeah, he's uh, he's definitely the fantasy guy for sure. He's definitely better fantasy wise. And he looks like Skeletor. His hair is <laughs> he's terrifying. It's terrifying. It's awful. It's a good thing he's a millionaire, right? So do you think that his stock has increased or, or lowered with the trade line? A? I, th I think then it's Dubois lowered. After. I think they both decrease after the trade. Cause I think Dubois isn't going to be the first line center on that team. So he's going to get less opportunity. And I think that line is not playing with the likes of Blake Wheeler or Mark Shifley. So he's decreased as well. They're still great yeah, players. Like the other thing is line said he wanted to play with a great centerman, but like you had Shifley. What else do you want? Like, how great do they have to be? Was he playing? Was he up playing with Shifley? I, I think he I he was like that, he, he had I mean, trouble he was on the though. team. 
Yeah, I think he wanted to be relied on as like a, a first line winger. And it seemed like Winnipeg would just never. And who knows? They the, the relationship probably suffered from there. Yeah, I mean, I think, honestly, he played most often on the left wing with Paul Stastny and Nikolai Ehlers, um, because I think Kyle Connor was ahead of him on the first line in Winnipeg. Uh, But, I mean, that's it. Kyle uh, Kyle Connor was awesome last year. He's awesome this this year. year. Yeah, Yeah. he's been great. He's He's typically solid. In fact, maybe he's better than Line A. Oh, I don't know about that. He very Seeing well the controversial be. stuff again. Yes, yeah. Line has just got that 50 goal just potential. Like maybe. But you got to wonder if that potential is something he can achieve on Columbus, yeah. or if this is just a temporary stopgap for this these two teams. I mean, Kyle Connor is the reason that Larry 316 has taken it to the big beaks. So that's for sure. Oh yeah. man, Larry is smoking <laughs> me. What a week he's had. I haven't even had a bad week. But nope. Larry's just laying it down yeah. on me. Like Kyle Connor got nine points. <laughs> well that's what if you look up like the top 10 right now on yahoo you just get a cavalcade of the who's who such as bobby ryan who all jeff of a sudden petrie. decided to be an early heart candidate jeff petrie up there ryan, ryan. <laughs> uh, i'm pretty sure larry setting records this week for season in season nine at Shell for like points and goals scored in the week just throwing that out there is he really is that is that i um, i think that, so. that, that real news i think 28 that's pretty real news i think 28 <laughs> is uh it's relatively our... real <laughs> i uh i left flurry on the bench today for a shutout that would have gave me another two wins over brad so i'm i'm wearing the i'm feeling like a, a real goat here having flurry left on the bench for no particular reason and i think all of a sudden i started losing against luke and i was beating him for all 13 out of 14 days if it was two weeks or whatever it was like up until today i was stomping him and and like my team started out so strong and then a bunch of games got postponed like you can't rely on any stats and alexander ovechkin Four games yeah. without Ovechkin the worst. is <laughs> literally like the most debilitating thing that could happen yeah. to a fantasy That's hockey like that said Eight man games of a regular player. Yeah, I think that the main the main lesson there is don't stack don't stack players from the same team. Spread your guys out. For sure. Probably the best thing to do this year, especially goalies. Don't go for the handcuff this year. Get goalies on different teams because. If you have two goalies from one team and they're your only goalies, then no. But goalies, I, is, I think goalies is out the, for a week. What are you going to do? Goalies are having to quarantine from each other, so I think a tandem is actually a great idea because yeah. But if they postpone your game, you're screwed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh well, I mean, I think there's going to be gay. I don't know how you, you you can't predict that. There's sure Dallas. It's now a great idea to pick someone off off the Dallas waiver wire. Should I haven't played no games? <laughs> they still yeah, exactly. got like another it's eighty-one seven games. goals in the first game. Yeah, I actually <laughs> wanted to sniff at Pavelski, but I had all my moves used because I think like he just had such a bad year. And I know I'm way more of a person to predict a bounce back than to try and predict a breakout. But I just felt like at the bottom of a draft, Pavelski like maybe could do it. He's been awesome. Also, they lost awesome them in the first game. I mean, that's it. Let me also just say, Evan, uh, let me haul out my violin for you on your hard life of winning nine to one in Shell. Way, way, way. Well, no, uh, for a while, there, well, I feel I've like got, a real joke. Blackwood got uh, Blackwood went out on me, and uh, Matthews went out on me. I actually think he was just sucking because he complained <laughs> about. Sheldon, he he complained about how they played against Edmonton, and then he was out with chest soreness for a game. Like, come on. <laughs> like, come on. He's back tonight. He scored a goal, though. Drover B's out with chest soreness all the time. All the time. Um, so, Larry has 33 goals this week. The next closest is 23. Nick Linus has 13. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's hard over Nick two has weeks a very high powered offense nine power play points oh man yeah. that's rough What's larry that? also has the most assists right now with 44 70 77 points 
Yeah, he's uh, he's. I'm pretty sure he's setting. I'm telling you, he's setting records. Pretty sure. Separate. He's also hit 130 hits and 226 shots. Oh, yeah. listen, I got 170 hits here, boys. My team's I have 122 up. shots, and I'm not winning. <laughs> Not winning shots. I was so winning like, shots uh, and well, not hits, but hits. I was like high up. But this past week, I've slowed down a bit. But you're at two twenty five now in yeah. shots. So Larry's got you by one. Evan, just so your viewers know, we play in uh, banger leagues, which include shots, hits, and blocks. Yeah, we and even use shorthanded points, which is uh, of some debate. Don't use plus minus because it's a poopy stat. You know what I was thinking would be a good stat? Time on ice. Yeah. Nah. Team yeah. full defenseman. Team full defenseman, yeah. All, yeah. All... <laughs> Team full of like I... old, old ass defensemen who just play 31 minutes a game. I I'll tell you what's thought back that uh, star, star votes would be good. Like a player of the game. Yeah, but sometimes they do those with sentimentality. Like, you know, yeah, all of a sudden. Very rarely. Like, like Timu Solani when he's retiring. Eh, first start of the game. Yeah, you're looking at one or two per player's career. <laughs> All of a sudden, Corey Perry gets first, second, and third star. <laughs> hey, hey, Shoots to the top of the standings. If that's it, then that's it. So wills you it. Choose the stats. You choose the stats. Um. So what if uh, Joe Thornton? Not at much, and then quickly knocked out for like what seems like an extended period of time. Yeah, poor rib. guy. He, oh, he hurt? One of his ribs was snapped. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, not great. For four weeks, Evan. I mean, that's not. I think he. I think Might Joe Thornton is firmly in. I'm too old for this shit territory. Like, if your ribs are cracking out there, Joe. Yeah. He's turning to dust. You just gotta get Tom Brady's guy on the phone. Let's be honest. Yeah, that Tom pulled so out another one today. Day. Hey, going to the Super Bowl again. Was yeah. he good this, this year? I don't, I don't pay attention. He's he like was. medium. He's, he's middle of the road, you know? Like, okay. And you can't go wrong with that because he brings the winning mentality to the team, right? Right. So, well, his, like, his brain is still the fastest. Maybe he yeah, can't I mean, throw like, it no more. He threw three interceptions today, but they still won, you know? Like, yeah, so that's, today, that's but he hadn't thrown, like, any on the road in two, 359 attempts or something. Like, it, it did go to shit for him for a second there, but Aaron Rodgers was also, like, throwing a pick, and, and they weren't good on the ball either. Not that I've watched goes, all year, but I've definitely watched uh, the playoffs with the Bucks. Just goes to show you that having a winning mentality and that work ethic, even if you're 43, Joe Thornton, the power of the his life. <laughs> oh, Wayne Simmons got a power play goal today. His first uh, first goal of the season. And he's been, uh, you know, doing a little bit of that dirt. I think you can find a place for Wayne on someone's team. If you're in a if you're in a banger penalty minute type of league. Yeah, as long as you don't have time on ice as a category. Yeah. He should be a pretty solid ad. I'll I tell you some people I've been in their leagues and he's been okay just okay but he's also just minus great. five which if you're in plus minus that's not great yeah you're not, not really loving that uh i thought <clears throat> kirill kaprizov looks pretty good even though he hasn't he's still playing a, i mean minnesota is kind of but he looks pretty good like just to watch him i think he's probably gonna be pretty good mm. this year it's, i think romanoff in montreal was has been a big mm. surprise i think There's he's he's, he's a big story man team and how good they are <laughs> So uh, is Romanov a new uh, banger must-have? What does everyone think? For a defenseman, yeah. I, I mean, I picked him up in BSD, so now I'm just talking about my team. But I picked him up in another league, and he does do... He's like he's doing... He's getting three hits one game, then he's getting three shots yep. or three blocks one game, and he's been on the power play. Like He's he's the, right. the five-tool guy you he's want like as like your fifth guy. defenseman. Uh, he's been so far. He's been like yep. very active, uh, you know, high event type of player. He plays the second power play unit, which isn't as valuable, but uh, he still plays power play unit. And uh, you know, when Shea Weber eventually gets hurt because he's old as hell, that'll be, uh, you know, he'll he'll take over. I'd say that's my guess. Like I'm, uh, I'm just looking up the the so far top of uh, top of the ranking list. And it's all high event, 
like what a, what a list. Tyler Myers is number three in our particular banger league it's right crazy. now, which is just so silly. I think Bobby Ryan is like way up there because he had that big. Well, Tyler Toffoli is the number one skater. Yeah, because he had three games in a row where he just like went ape crap, ape shit. Oh man, yeah. he's yeah. The benefit he... of playing Vancouver. We, if every player played Vancouver every game, they would also have nine goals. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I was trash talking fucking Tyler Foley all day long. Still um, I love him because Tyler Yamamoto is also number twelve. Tyler Yamamoto has thirteen blocks. He has more Whoa. blocks than he has shots. Actually, Yamamoto is a multi-cat stud. He has almost the same amount of blocks, shots, and hits. Yeah. Check yeah. out his stat line. Yeah, he's at 1.5, 1.5, 2.17. 5, 2. So he's not in abundance, but he is like, I mean, if you got a forward getting two blocks a game, mm. that is unique positionality. Yeah, but you got a forward getting nine shots. That's why, um, uh, what's his name was so good last year? Uh, Pajot. Pajot was amazing last year because he blocked a ton for a forward. Excuse me, what's his name? Jean Gabriel Pajot. Oh, Pajo. Okay, yeah, he had a bunch of shorthanded points too. He, he yeah. did, but he blocked. He blocked a pile. He was more than one. He was like one point five blocks a game, which was amazing. I think Kyler Yamamoto is not that hot. I think his okay. name's actually Tyler, and it's it was an error. I think he got and a shorthanded. Embarrassed. He got a shorthanded point, and that's what's driving his value because he got nine shots in seven games. It's not very much. But mm-hmm. if he scores like a forward and blocks like a defenseman, then he is going to be elite. That's true. That is true. Right? Yep. There's so much, uh, especially when it comes to centers. Like, if your center is not putting in any peripheral output, output, they better be getting you a pile of power play points. Because, like, how, you, you, you got to dress up centers nowadays. They're sort of... Because uh, <laughs> unless you use face-offs, face-offs, then all of a sudden centers are... Hens teeth, what a but bad stat. yeah, I don't After love it. Minus, I think face-offs is the worst. Like you shouldn't be able to count 170 of something in a week or whatever. Like it's just dumb. It's really and, dumb. And it makes centers too valuable. It sucks. Yeah, centers are valuable enough. Uh, you liking Quinn Hughes there, Mister Tiger? Shears Town. Uh, so far I'm pretty happy. Like the thing about drafting kale mccarr and uh quinn hughes is that i was like i'm kind of getting suspicious that evander kane has a quick exit from the nhl that could happen at any second (laughs) or like he gets arrested or something like (laughs) or you know all of a sudden he does something that gets him suspended for 18 games which is really cool (laughs) for like you know the penalty minutes you get that one game but like Anyway, I just wanted to invest in some new keepers, and so far they're pretty good on the points. Like they've definitely been pumping out uh, a fair number of assists. What I hope to see is if, as they mature, they start shooting the puck more and stepping into a few more shots. Like that's the hope, is that one of them kind of starts to play a little more on the peripheral side. Uh, if I'm going to keep them, but for right now, I mean, I'm I'm pretty pleased with both of them. I mean, Quinn Hughes has been averaging three shots a game so far, so like that's not the worst. But I get, I'm, I'm with you. He definitely needs to hit or block a little. <laughs> Vancouver hasn't one. been playing well either. But he's got six assists and three of them on the power play, so he's already yeah. Uh, yeah. He's off to this kind of bang instead that he was last year. Every now and then, though, one of those boys just gets like three PPPs in a game, all assists. Like it just happens like that, and you're like, oh shit. Do you think uh, if Evander Kane fights Jake Paul that he'll get the penalty minutes over to the NHL and he just wouldn't win the whole week? Is that how it goes? I think if he fought Jake Paul, I should get some award, regardless of what it is, just for having that guy. Uh, but I guess he needs to do it. It's going to happen. You watch. Probably not going to happen with Conor McGregor, who got his face yeah. smacked not in last there. night. His leg kicked in, his face smacked out. Yeah, he got his leg kicked real good. I like how that's, that's like the meta in UFC now. It's just kicking people in the lower leg until they fall down. Till they till they can't step forward the on the power foot, yeah. I mean, that's what happened to Mike. Kept getting kicked in the legs. Yeah. Uh, the Rangers just lost again. 
not looking so hot. The experts hey. never know which teams will be good. Yeah. Every year they get it wrong. Yeah, and the Avalanche are losing to the Ducks, so they're also not as good. People were saying that the Avalanche were like the cup favorites by a long shot. That's what Vegas was saying. And they were the Vegas like, favorites. Vegas have a better track record than experts do. How was it sure. not Tampa Bay again? But because Kutra was injured. But um, they got that wrong. I don't believe in the Avalanche like that. Uh, I would have taken Carolina instead over them. I think Carolina's got a sick team. Yeah, I, I do. I think Carolina got a. I think Montreal's got a sick team too this year, and it pains me. The words crossing my lips <laughs> <laughs> puts a shudder through my entire body. But I, um, I think Montreal's got a good team. I'm more invested in Montreal than I've ever been with Brendan Gallagher and now Romanov. Like I usually don't have anybody from the Canadians, but they are looking like a high event team, and they're they're getting into it. I like the Canadians. I like their I like their roster. I like the character that they got on the team. I like their young players. Like their defense is amazing. Their goaltending is amazing. Like there's very little not to like. You're finally seeing the light. That's what I hear. The Canadians this year. No, I hope they lose to the Leafs. <laughs> but um, don't get my man wrong. Yeah, but I do like them. I do think they got a good team. Oh. I think they made a lot of good moves. What do you at, Steve? Steve, if you want, you drop in if you want. I can send you the meat. Steve Power just uh, popped on. Hey, Steve. Said, what do you at? What's up, buddy? And anyway, so I've just got a lot of uh, a lot of high hopes and a lot of people. I picked up Tony D'Angelo, but I feel like he's talked himself out of a career. Yeah. But you're just like yeah, yeah, he's hoping. He's played his way out of the league for sure. He should do, have deleted his Twitter app a long time ago. Also, said, like I'm I mean, bankrupt. there were so there were a lot of suggestions that he was uh, one of the luckiest players in the NHL last year. Uh, they've got Truba there. And they've got Fox there, most importantly. I don't know if you guys have seen what Fox is doing, but talking about like a multi-cat stud defenseman. Oh, let's Fox check, is let's check him out. Fox power play. He shoots, he hits, he blocks, he gets points, and he plays 25 minutes a game. He's no Matt Roy. Well, obviously, Matt Roy is one of the best <laughs> players in the NHL. Let alone is it Vader. Roy or Wah, like, like Patty? Well, is he French? Or Wah. Actually, I, I, I have no idea. D'Angelo is a big. I think D'Angelo is a, is a toilet flush for me, but I think Fox Ooh, Steve, got the memos is going. on his way up, climbing out of the toilet. I think Tony D'Angelo was, yeah, he, uh, yeah, not, not a big fan. Wasn't a big fan last year. Doesn't shoot the fuck enough. Big suck. Yeah, Adam so Fox the- has been getting blocks and he's been getting shots. Um, he's he's not hitting, but he's also putting points up on the board. So he got four, and I think. Uh, yeah, he got one assist tonight. So that that would put him up to five points. And he's playing lots of minutes, and he's got that power play time. Now, something interesting that's going on in New York is, so like, assuming D'Angelo is spent, it, there's a question of whether Truba gets power play one time. Because if Truba gets power play one time, then he gets a lot more valuable. Um, yeah. If Fox holds on to it, then I think Fox, you could – Fox could be a, break, a breakout defenseman in Banger Leagues this year. So Fair is offense. Truba just, like, not a great offensive yeah. d- defenseman? You know, it always seems like yeah. he's one of those guys who every year it feels like he's about to – someone's talking you into believing he's a power play point guy, but it never <laughs> yeah, seems to go true. now. He's like what Ryan McDonough used to be, kind of. You know, he's that <laughs> he guy. He did better than McDonough, though, isn't he? I mean, he had 50 points a couple of years ago, didn't he? Like 20 points. Uh, you know, however you do, it just depends on the opportunity that you're given, right? Yeah. A lot of these guys are fucking amazing players. So, like, you know, Truba, yes, he's capable of it. Is there someone who could do it better? Probably. Yeah, maybe. On the offensive side of things. I think Chris is right. Adam Fox is good. What I wasn't expecting was uh, Rasmus Anderson to take PP1 oh, yeah. in Calgary over Giordano. I know. Yeah. That's pained me. Yeah. <laughs> That's big. That's a big demotion. I mean, Why does that pain you, didn't dude? he win the Norris two years him. ago? It, uh, it wasn't very long ago. 
I mean, he is quite old. Yes. He is quite old, but he had some turbo elite years there. Like, he was real yeah. good in our... Calgary had... That was the year that if you drafted anyone on Calgary, like, for example, Elias Lindholm or mm -hmm. Giordano or any of the buys, you did really, really well. They had a really good year. As your good yeah. had, like, what, 90 They overperformed. Or... They got lucky. Uh, I'll tell you, Sean Monaghan. Mr. Moynihan has been uh, pretty good so far this year. He was shit last year. Yeah, Amazing year before pretty, that. Now he's been pretty good straight this year. To have on your on your roster. That's a guy that you can get late in drafts. and Yeah. And, uh, reason to sit on like, center. People like Mo Monahan or Monahan or whatever is a reason not to draft the centerman in the first five rounds. Yeah, unless you're not unless you're drafting like a center plus, which is like when I think a center goes way. If a center shoots or hits above average, that's a super valuable position yeah. to get. Eichel, like Eichel, and uh, and Matthews has been shooting his face oh, yeah. off Eichel, too. Matthews has been hitting too. Matthews is like so good. Yeah, he's gotten a little angry. I'm I'm here for it. That's why Sagan was so valuable back in the day because he was a center and shoot like four shots a game. Yeah, and I think he still averages like a bit over three, which is definitely worth having. But he never quite lit it up. He can't skate anymore. He's done. People kept telling me about how good Robert Thomas was supposed to be as a sleeper, <laughs> and boy, oh boy, has he ever been mad. He been he been sleeping, man. He is d deep sleeper. Go back to bed, Rob. He is he out. <laughs> He's out like a light. I'll tell you, I was uh, the Florida being postponed and then coming back for two games and then getting postponed again for another two games. It was super frustrating too, because like Huberto came back and he, oh yeah, there's four points in two games. You're like, bam, two power play points, and now uh, once again back to. I feel like everybody's had the same issue and some that has got kind of got on my nerves yeah. or felt bad about it. You, you feel like your best players haven't even really gotten a chance to break open yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I you think... don't really know what your team is capable of on a, on a good week. Does that make sense? Which then you can kind of start like may, maybe giving up on players too early because like you're getting this notion that they ha haven't done anything for you, but they probably actually haven't played all yeah, that exactly. all that much like what does one do with the waiver wire this year like the waiver wire is already looking pretty bleak i don't oh, know man it, for defensemen it's like bad i had to pick up mario ferraro <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah oh mario yeah that that and one. then i spent some time convincing chris about how good he was um <laughs> as like a defense mechanism <laughs> but uh, he's still on the team. Oh, he had a point. He he's been a... pretty good. Hasn't yeah, he? he's been okay. He's been okay. He's one percent rostered, so it's early adoption. I've Mary. never heard of him. Yeah, no, me neither. But he's playing a lot. He's getting twenty-three minutes a game. So um, somebody's got to play on San Jose. Yeah, he's got three points. Not bad for a defenseman. Just out of nowhere. Oh wait, actually, they have. Uh, is he playing with one of the boys? Is he playing with uh, Burns or Carlson? He's playing with Burns. He's Burns' partner. Oh yeah, I mean that's never a bad thing. Although, yeah. you know, as you get older, you watch some of your old heroes age as well. And yeah. like Brent, Brent Burns is not the 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 league winner that he was five he years ago. Aging no. superstars. I'm going to ask this question to Evan and Evan only. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Cuz I Evan, do love do you aging think superstars. Year this year because I heard he's flying out there. Uh sorry, what was the first part of the question? What do you think of Jeff Carter this year? Uh you know, it's one of those things where he got picked up right before I was probably about oh to God. do it. <laughs> I haven't looked at him since he got picked up, but when I saw the first game that he took like eight shots, yeah, like I don't, I don't care if he scores one, if he's gonna, if he's, if he would shoot at like three and a half or four a game, I don't, because you laugh and say, oh yeah, well he's not gonna, and early on in the season you're looking to get people who are gonna shoot a lot and get the points, but like a couple months in, anyone who gets over three shots is on a team. And belongs yep. on a team, yep. Yep. and so why? What you know? You you risk 
that's why you don't draft guys like Jeff Carter because you're like, oh, maybe I'm I want a breakout. I want someone who's going to get some points. But when when February rolls around, you're going to be like looking at people and saying, oh, two point four shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. You know, <laughs> pretty good. No, I can make that work. I well, I couldn't agree with that anymore. So <laughs> well said. Um, you got any interest in him? I mean, I'll trade him to you. <laughs> we'll see. I am looking for some amount of uh, a little more flexibility in my center position. I was kind of mm-hmm. like not all that satisfied, but Trachek, mm-hmm. when he played, has been good for me. Anje Kopitar very good. has been good. Has he's been having a good night right now. He... Trachek was a great pick, Bev. I think he's he's getting a good opportunity. Yeah, I was. I really wanted play. him going into the draft because I knew he's got a little bit of that capacity for dirt. Might get in on, on the penalty kill. Might get in on the power play like had you just like slipped. you know it's he, sort like, of about how you draft. he did slip a little bit but i think like he hasn't oh, he he's been so injured so year. much and he's hard to rely on yeah kopitar is having a three-point night which puts him on one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten points in one two three four five what? six I mean, he'll the games maybe leading the league after tonight he's leading the league Wow. No, well, I don't. I don't think he's leading, but he's pretty. I mean, he's. No, I think he is. Really? Yeah. Man. For points scored, I'm pretty sure. Just let me, let me check. Uh, Mitch Mariner's also got ten, so he'll be tied for the lead. Oh, I thought for some reason I thought McDavid might be up there. Well, I suppose McDavid it was a decent assumption. Has seven points right now. Nashville have seven shots through two periods. Nashville's offense has been maybe the worst in the league, and they're hey, a year with a lot of bad offenses. Guess who's tied with Tyler Toffoli for third in scoring overall with eight points. So there's five players with eight points. Can you guys guess who they are? Not a clue. John Carlson. No. <laughs> They're all forwards. Uh, Kyle, what's his name? Kyle Connor. Connor. No, he has nine. He's actually in second. He's one of the players that are ahead of Toffoli. Nick Suzuki? So four other. No. Nick Babuki? No. Do you Nick want one? Nick Suzuki. Is, it, is, the it, is it a surprise? Yeah, yeah. Who's, yeah, who's the one I'm thinking obscurely here? Kevin Hayes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Kevin Hayes. <laughs> oh, Hayes. wow. But the other three are actually pretty good players. Who are they? Uh, Shafley, Stone, and Bo Horvat. All have eight points so far. Yeah, it's a good crew. What is a... Uh... What's up with Kevin Hayes? I think Couturier got injured, did he not? People have been, like, trading him and... Yeah. Like, he got traded for like a first round draft pick recently, and I was like, "What? Are you serious?" Uh, but now he's actually off to a pretty good start. He's the top line center pick. there right first now, because Couturier has been injured, but which six five has also. been Konechny has been worse. Couturier and Konechny seem to have a, a thing going. Kevin Hayes has been good though. I don't know who he's clicking with on the team, but he's playing well. Okay. Nolan, pa- Nolan Patrick, I think, has gotten more opportunity as well. Uh, I don't know if he's done much with it. No, he didn't play I hockey don't, for I don't think. over a year. Yeah, yeah, he had a problem. He had some sort of issue, right? Some sort of medical issue. Was yeah. concussion syndrome? He had no. some, sort of, on some kind of headache that problem, wasn't it? Uh, migraines. That's what it was. Had a bad head. Oh, yeah, that'll, that'll do you in. <laughs> I was going to play buys, but I got a bad head. Yeah, in bed They're with bad take air. Advil and go back to bed. <laughs> so, what are the, what's everyone's opinions on? How do you go about having good goaltending in a year? You when, don't. Is there don't like you goalie. normally? Oh, yeah. I am very pro getting really goalie good guy. goalies, but this year I could not see the sense. I could not see any legitimate sense in, like, unless you get Vasilevsky or someone, like, who's, like, totally keepable, 
I think it's just better off to go with garbage goalies and try to find, you know, tandem. Because the tandem is way more in use this year. So the backups, yeah, yeah my cousin Steve just came in and said, year of the backups is right. Like, I think you got to be looking number two goalie on a good team. Because there's so many back-to-back games. Like, you can cobble together enough starts to maybe win. I agree. I, mean, I definitely agree with that. There's a... I mean, I think with all the the game rescheduling that we're seeing, I think there's going to be uh, condensed schedules for a lot of teams, which means there's going to be even more opportunity for back to backs and split uh, the starts. divisional realignment really screwed everything up too uh, for goalies. Yeah, because it's been a totally different feel to the league. Like the North Division has been chewing goalies up, but um, the West, the one with like LA and Anaheim and that, like, Oh my God, they got got no good teams over there. It's been so, I had Martin Jones for a bit and I'm still thinking about picking him back up because like, who's going to win in that division. And I feel like, you know, I feel like the sharks are, are like the third or fourth best team. You gotta gotta let Sleeping Dogs buy on Martin Jones. I gotta be honest with you. So, (laughs) You're about six years too late on that train. He's just, <laughs> yeah, he's just, he's so not going to break out. I don't not going to turn it around. But you know, you need wins from somebody. Yeah, you're not going to get wins from. Well, it's, it's just not. You're not. You ain't going to do it. <laughs> you're not, not a believer. Have, I think you're going. Believer. To, you're better off going on Washington's backup or something like. Just like my cousin well, Steve said kid. there. I think you're more likely with Capo Kakinen or whatever in Minnesota than him because, like, at least Minnesota played defensively, you know? But yeah. Like, yeah, I think still... Minnesota are pretty decent. Which I think is benefiting sure. Mackenzie Blackwood in New Jersey. Like, they're playing a defensive game, and now yep. that he's lucked into starting the line share of the game, of course, now he's got COVID, like like everybody else. But or yep. Or, no, he's on the protocol, whatever that means. But he's, you know, if they play a tight game, he might not get all that many wins, but you might have a decent save percentage by the end of it. So I think you got to be way more careful about who you start and when you start them. I think it's just, yeah, that's uh, probably true. I, I think uh, Blackwood is awesome value this year. Yeah, I mean, did I, you even I, draft I, him? No, I picked him. I picked him up. No, wait, I did draft him. I did draft him. Yeah. I, I mean, like like you just said. New Jersey's playing a defensive a defensive game. Who else is going to start there? I think their backup is like Scott Sterling or Andrew Hammond or something. Like, who you know? Who are these people? Andrew Hammond, the Hamburglar. Been a little yeah, while. Yeah, he used I to yeah that from seven came years in ago. Ottawa. Yeah, for like three years ago, it was really good, and then never again. Actually, Hammond is uh, the third stringer in Minnesota. That doesn't surprise me. So. Vancouver's given up 33 goals through seven games. Yeah, they're really What's up, good. LaFonda? Thanks for popping in. Yeah, Vancouver not, not doing it on a grand scale. I got to say, I think the hockey's been great. Like, the feel of series is, like, playing mm-hmm. one after another. I think the players are more rested because they're kind of, like, not traveling as much. Yep. And you're getting more of a rivalry, rivalry feel. So, coaching seems a little more important. I feel like there's more penalty minutes and scrapping and dirt, which is great for bangers leagues. Like so far, I'm all about the divisional uh, alignment. Yeah, I like yeah. I like the, the having more back to back, like uh, games against one another too. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I agree with that. Rivalry. I think uh, yeah, it's good. It builds a little rivalry, and and they don't have to travel as much. It makes a boatload of sense uh, for them to keep that going forward, and I hope they do. Um, I really am enjoying the North division. Uh, having Canadian teams playing Canadian teams all the time has been yeah. a delight. Every game's worth watching. It's been a delight. It's, it's, I mean, yeah, I'm, watching, it's... I'm watching Vancouver games now. I'm watching Calgary games now. I'm watching Montreal now. Like, I'm watching hockey more because every game is like such a like a got a little blood in us. Awesome yeah, yeah. You're fighting for the best team in Canada. Like, yeah, f- fuck yeah, that's awesome. Oh, uh, Chris, uh, by the way, my uh, Stee says Wedgwood is starting now for New Jersey, he thinks. Okay. So, we- like, yeah, another Steve. another top-tier Vesna candidate. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Wedgwood. <laughs> the guy who owns the cafe. Yeah, you know, <laughs> the cafe in town. Yeah. That closed. 
that closed seven years ago. <laughs> oh yeah, I think it is. Wedgwood it's had, not on the go Wedgwood anymore. Wedgwood had a shutout tonight against the Islanders. Oh, yeah, right. Right. thanks for gifting Steph, my buddy uh, Steph Trissy. Oh yeah, Steph. He's a he's a guy who comes down and watches the odd game of uh, NHL. 21. I haven't played it in a couple weeks though. It is fun, but the game is so dedicated to the cross the crease pass now. It's almost like it's lost a little bit of the magic. Sounds all right. I it's mean, all, it's so, always so, been so, that way. No. Pardon? It's always been. It's all it's the so you so cross the crease, so you get up very close then do a pass cross one timer is that Yeah, like backdoor one timers are 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 definitely a fixture of the game. Uh, and like it's people are so good at just waiting until they get the opportunity. Uh, yeah, they're like it's it's killer, but it is a it was a pretty good game I thought. So uh, anyone anyone got their eye on any upcoming players? I gotta say, there's a few guys on, on the waiver wire who, if you play in a banger league, just seem to be doing stupid amounts of hitting right now, and I don't know if it's sustainable. But at a certain point, you like, yeah, you're hitting six or seven a game. That that deserves a place on a team. Yeah, especially if if you have issues with hits. Uh, I don't know. Is like hitting up this year or something? Does it seem like that to you guys? I gotta find someone who does a few hits. I'm, Tyler Moss, I'm low. Twenty-nine already. Yeah, like there's just there's people are just pounding away. I feel it feels to me like there's more hitting. Well, my team in our league has 170 hits. Yeah. Just to, like, give you an idea of how many hits are going down. Yeah. Over uh, a week and a half, I guess it is, for this length, extra lengthy week. Yeah. yeah. So it's really like, you know, where are you trying to find your value? I, I think that a defenseman who shoots, for my money, is the most valuable one asset you could you can probably have. It seemed like those were flying at a very early rate in in our last in our league. Yeah, I think a defenseman who plays the power play regularly, which typically Evan is a defenseman that shoots. I think that's a real gem. Yeah, you got people like Dougie Hamilton was disappearing over drafts this year. How how has Hamilton been? Bad, but he hasn't played. Carolina hasn't hasn't played. Play. They've only played three games. He's got like two yeah. points. Yeah, three. that's right. You were waiting on so much Carolina, mm-hmm. uh, which is yeah, he gross. hasn't been bad. That's not accurate at all. He just hasn't played. Uh, I was, I felt like there was a lot of good defensemen this year, but there wasn't a lot of good wingers. So there was like a steep drop off in the quality of wingers. Oh so. yeah, I think this is a year where you got to take a flyer on some old veterans to maybe maybe get it going one more time oh, like yeah. there it's it, uh it, was it wasn't this was the year no well it's every year for me but like looking around <laughs> <laughs> average if i bet if we did average age of teams uh i'm gonna come out on top for sure well, you can't Pro- argue with the results right now. probably no, not you can't argue with the results. You something else. did you get backstrom after your bed or what uh no i don't have i don't think i have backstrom in either league there he does uh, who I did, uh, you know, I I think I debated between him and Kopitar, so right now I'm happy. And then Trotchek ended up filling. Like, I really wanted Trotchek, and I didn't want to wait. So my centers aren't producing quite as many points as I want yet, although Matthews has been great and uh, Kopitar has been great. But even, God bless his soul, Phil Kessel has been shooting a little more, and <laughs> Phil Kessel yeah, he's been good. okay. Yeah. Phil's been good. You can boo, but on a, on a hot dog really? diet, my man is is coming man. to play. I don't like it. There's you can't deny the fact that he's been bringing it. Has he though? Can I? Can I not? Why? Yeah, he's like. Well, I guess you can. Has he been bringing it? Bringing it, or has he just been? I don't know if he's bringing it. He is. He's got. This is the best he's it. been in years. Really? Or I guess right. at least since okay. he left Pittsburgh. All right, I'm he's got 2.8 shots a game and four goals. Messi's been in years. Two years ago, he had 82 points. So, yeah, <laughs> since after he left Pittsburgh. Messi's been since last year, is what you mean to yeah, say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Jesus Christ. Well, you know, sometimes, too, my philosophy is that 
Every, even bad teams have someone who has to score the goals. And not that Arizona's been bad. They're just not, like, terribly offensively gifted. They've just been playing you know, really tight games. I mean, I, They've been good I games. I agree with that. Bad. You drafted, say that... Drafted. Sorry, go ahead, Tristan. Oh, man, I'm just... I I get the, the idea of, like, even bad teams got to score. And they do. They do score. But they don't have to score very often. Like, I mean, Brady Coach... Brady Kachuk, who's best player in the league, in a banger league for sure, scored 20 goals last year. And he's probably going to get the same year, and that's it. It's not like – it's not 35, and that's a big difference, you know? You know what I mean? Like, What's Brady up to this year? How's he doing? He's a beast like he always is, I'm sure. He's just – Definitely. Players so like good. that are just ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Oh, Brady, Brady's averaging like four shots and four hits a game. He's the beast. Like that's a guy who's the best player in your league for like the next six. As long as the body can sustain getting that amount of shots and that amount of hits, because that's another thing. You love those players, but they take they they get injured. As like Evander Kane was that player, still is to a version, but isn't isn't quite the same. But knock on wood, Evander Kane hasn't really been hurt in a while, except in the wall. That's because I think his he doesn't get paid if he's injured, so <laughs> he's bankrupt. So he can't. So he's limping he's, out there. Yeah, he's keep going forever. Did You're right, Beth. His his, uh, his hits are down. Kane Kane's not hitting as much. No, I think you know the first week he was doing kind of the same thing, and then the past week he's he's I think he spent more time in the penalty box. Honestly, like he's been getting a pile of minor penalties, but no, I don't think he's hitting quite as much. Probably losing a little bit of that vigor. Weird. I forgot that he played with Buffalo. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, he did. And like he was that. a beast with Buffalo, man. They hit bad. He had a couple of good years there. He's playing 22 minutes a game, man. There's no wonder San Jose sucks. <laughs> Holy shit. That, that, that isn't to say he's not a great fantasy option. No, he's no, yeah, fantasy. he's... I just mean, like, if your team is relying on Evander Kane as being your number one, you're uh, you're in for some trouble. Yeah, I think so. How are they going to cobble together anything? And even their def- even the two big boy defensemen, they're just hurting each other's value, too. Like, neither one of them. I got mm. Eric Carlson, and he's not – he hasn't been, like, bad, but he's certainly not the Eric Carlson of old. Now, I think I did yeah. get him in round seven or eight or something. But it's Carlson's just how far value. he's fallen. The Beatles broke up San Jose, there. boys. No and more Burns also got – his value dropped when Carlson went there too. It was it was fantasy-wise, it was bad for both of them. Yeah. They're just sharing way too much responsibility. Which is too bad because Carlson was like the best player in, again, in a bangers league for a couple of years there. Yeah, there's rare just, talent. The most Locked famous everybody. hockey – fantasy hockey podcast is after eric carlson yeah it, it it's indeed it is and they still believe they still believe in him a little i think this is probably the last year that they'll say he might be okay <laughs> yeah i think the the keepability has kind of fallen out of it um what do you guys look for in a in a keeper when when do you think it's time to divest from some veterans and and because that's the thing a lot of veterans put up you know, they maybe never hit their zenith again, but they put up some pretty good reliable numbers, like Malkin and buys like that. But about when do you think it's time Malkin to divest, and what do you look for in a keeper? Malkin's been really bad. Has, has Malkin's been really bad? Yeah, Malkin's been Has really he? bad. That's hot off the press. It's fresh off okay. the press. All right, I'm yeah. gonna check it. Malkin had zeros across the board tonight. Oof. What's and going on? Is he silky? Or does, he have, does he have his so antibodies or what? For six games, he has two points yeah. and 11 shots and is a minus two. He got no antibodies. That's the problem. Yep. Poopy. So Ovechkin took all of his antibodies. Drover, when you picked him at 40, or whenever it was you got him, 50 at this, I was so was jealous. jealous. Yeah. yeah. And you got to think um, he cranks it up a bit. He will. He will. Well, he's been awfully bad to start the year. You hate to see a player get nothing didn't register in the game at all yeah it's terrible i mean he had 74 points in 55 games last year Oof. so 
Eey. I mean, he's probably he's gonna away. turn around, but it's like it's it's Malkin, and you know what he's yeah. like. He he'll blow. He'll one month he'll score all the points that everybody in Pittsburgh scored, and then he'll get injured, and then he'll be gone for like ten games. I think he doesn't probably care. just doesn't like who he's playing coming with. into the season ready, or he didn't come into the season ready. Maybe who's he playing with? He's playing with Jared McCann, Evan Rodriguez, because it's like Gensel and Rust on the first line, right? He lost yeah, Hornquist, right? I think he I think he yeah. played with Horny, or was that Crosby who played with Horny? Do we call him horny? Is that something that people call him? I mean, that's what I always said, but maybe that's not that's a, what I call him. That's, that's that true. would definitely be what his hockey name, hockey nickname is. Oh yeah, because you wouldn't Didn't make him think... Horner. He's not Horner. He's horny. Who He's were horny. we talking about before that? Malkin. Malkin. No. Yeah, Malkin's line mates. Because his yeah, his line mates may have dropped off a lot because Zucker has been extremely bad. I mean, Pittsburgh's been bad. Pittsburgh's yeah. had a bad six or seven games. They're going to turn it around. Yeah, the only ones who haven't been bad are uh, Sidney Bobidney. Yeah, Sidney Bobidney. It's just a pleasure to watch him make up something, make up a new <laughs> way to score a goal every year. Yeah. yeah. He had a really good goal. I think his first goal of the year. He did like a behind the back, no look, knock down, knock it in the air. pass, and scored. And then just flicked it in because he's still like the best what i don't understand is why they got kapanen on the third line and zucker on the third line centered by teddy bluger when they have evan rodriguez on the first line and jared mccann on the second line i mean you know i'm just gonna go out on a limb (laughs) and say move those guys up and move rodriguez and mccann down and see what happens it's like they never want to give Sidney crosby a winger it's like it's it never crazy. works. It's like no, give just give him like grinder. Just give him Evan Rodriguez. He'll just bang it in like some guy <laughs> yeah. we just found. Like who is Evan Rodriguez? <laughs> I, yeah, there's sorry. definitely some uh... Evan Rodriguez ever hears this. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry Evan Evan Rodriguez. Yeah, he's an undrafted guy. He w- worked his way up, so he's like the Max Talbot or whatever. Actually, Max yeah. Talbot was drafted. I think Steve raises an interesting point here is that like maybe they're just trying to spread out the talent a yeah, whole but pile. Why? They're, but why? they're not scoring. No, but I guess I think they've probably gotten away with this before, but I mean the two big boys are age, are aging there. Sounds to me an awful lot like uh number 1 that Michael's have chopped in a tree yeah. uh or some of me. Oh, Chrissy. <laughs> or uh it also sounds an awful lot to me like uh, old style thoughts on that coaches have. Well, this is the way it's done, you know. So we got to spread our offense. We got to get you know four lines rolling, so blah blah blah. And yeah. you know, every single coach that's like fifty plus years old has been saying that for twenty five years, and only one team wins every year. So the way coach at Pittsburgh, anyway, uh, it's what's his name? <laughs> is that is Johnson, right? It's the guy who got took over after uh Mike Sullivan. Name. Yeah, there you go. Not not Johnson. The other right normal white name. <laughs> Irish. Uh yeah. I, I feel like if you want to be the team that sticks out, you're the one that's got to do the thing that changes everything. So, man, if I was Pittsburgh, I'd be loading everybody up. Why do you think Chicago won 3 years and and like in 5? It's cuz they put Kane and Dave's together and like, yeah, boys go nuts. Mm. I also feel like Pittsburgh has separate. the cupboard depleted. Like, they've been I mean, trading first-round picks, like, every year for the past five years. I mean, I'm just making up that stat, but I feel like it's not that far <laughs> off. I mean, maybe, but they, like, they, they've they still been – they've what, they made playoffs, like, 11 years in a row or something? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're still a good team, but it just feels like they really need an influx of some amount of young talent if they want to go yeah. into, like, second part – second part of their dynasty because you know sid's gonna slow down but he's still gonna be valuable still he like sydney crosby could play till he's 40 and still be a great player on a team like i think he could get the joe thornton Hopefully treatment he and he probably will but joe they're gonna need someone to take points on in two games oh that just pains me to hear that i did he was a seven right wing too oh i thought you drafted him I drafted, Did you see that? I drafted him and dropped him chris 
So who? So he's on. on he's on Adam's, Adam's team. team. He's on Adam's team. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I see. Oh, they're dropping for Jeff Carter, probably. I think maybe Jeff Carter for Pittsburgh. <laughs> it's probably time soon for Malkin to go somewhere else. Yeah, I would say. That's what I would say. But I mean, in the meantime, <laughs> let Zucker or Kapanen play with them. I don't know. What, Kapanen should play with them because that's like totally his style of winger. Like, I don't know yeah. why they don't have They used team. to play together back They'll in the day. They'll probably didn't change they? it. There's only so many games they're going to lose before they make start, you know, putting it in the blender. Yeah. Right? And they also, I think that they made a big mistake in trading away Flurry years ago. I think oh, they did God, too. Yes. That was so. Look at. What's his name now? Matt Murray. On Ottawa. On Ottawa. And you know what? Fleury's not even getting any respect this year, but he's still... Like, that is the best goalie... He's the most reliable fantasy goaltender for the regular season I think there's ever been. I would probably have to agree with you, yeah. He's had a pretty incredible career. I think he's perhaps the best goalie ever drafted number one overall. Ooh, I don't know. Pretty yeah, good. I, mean, I, can't even I, mean, I don't know how long a list that is. Probably not very long. Him and Rick Rick Di Pietro. Oh, God. <laughs> Ricky, Ricky Dicky. I don't. Yeah, I don't, that, that's a sin to even bring that up. There's only three ever, and the other one is a guy from 1948. So, okay, so he is it's official. Didn't have a good. He's, he didn't have a good career, really. Yeah, and then he's played more than more games than the two of those goalies combined. Poor old Rick Di Pietro. Mm-hmm. Concussion problems comes back, gets into a fight, and knocked out by Michael Johnson, the backup yeah. goalie for Pittsburgh. <laughs> but at least you know he got paid on that contract for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's probably he's still doing, getting paid. Man. He's doing some color now too. I think he's like uh, he's with NBC. I'm pretty sure. That's, that's good for him. That was a Everybody sad always story. loved Deep. Deep Pietro was a fan favorite. He's good looking. Despite the injuries. Looks like a model. He's like uh, the American version of Henrik Lundqvist. Just couldn't play. Oh, so it looks like it's a year when Kling Klingberg's good. This is good oh, Klingberg really? year, everybody. Okay, because the scare. So that's actually a little bit of drama because then it was, I think, uh, an ish an issue that was much debated as to whether it would be Heiskanen or Klingberg this year. So your your team Klingberg. Uh, I don't have him. I just looked up, and he's got two games. He's got four points. He's still playing his second game. Like, that's happening. And he's got four on the PPP. It's Whoa. just one of those, one year he's terrible, and then one year he's, like, amazing. Now, it's obviously a bit early to say. But I always find a lot of Stanley, or, or a lot of, like, kind of analysts like to predict the fall or the switching of a, of a power play defenseman, like, before it happens. And I think you're just always better off going off with the incumbent guy up until, like, you know, maybe they get ancient. Like, it feels like once a power play guy is set, that's pretty well set until that guy, like, goes to another team. Yeah, I mean, yes. But then counterpoint is Giordano this year, you know? Like, it's that happened. And yeah, I, I, I think Giordano is still on the uh, – he's probably been usurped, but I think he's still pumping out some value here. Let me take a, let me take a gander at Gio. I mean, he was playing against it be, I don't think people should be could be faulted for the Miro Heiskanen hype because he did have 26 points in the playoffs last year. Yeah, <laughs> like it was, it, was game, it was a yeah. big, it was a big debate, and I, I think I mean Heiskanen arguably could still take it over. Yeah, I, I mean he's good, and it's just two he's games. Still, even last year, doing that wasn't the first power play guy either, right? Like John Klingberg was still the first power play guy. I think what's interesting is that Justin Falk, even though he hasn't really scored very much, has been getting all the ice time on mm-hmm. uh, St. Louis over like Colton Pareko and everything. Yeah. I think that's very interesting. Yeah, Falk. It looks like it's going to be a big year for Falk, I would argue. I mean, he's, he's getting the time. Getting the time for sure. Event. Yeah, he's always been willing to shoot, and he'd be one of those guys you'd hope be good. I mean, he's got he's got two goals and 17 shots. He's one of those guys that I would draft every year until like two years ago, and then that was I yeah. gave up. He yeah, had he an never, eight was, shot game. Uh, he was a teaser. Yeah, you yeah you thought something big was happening to Falk, but it never yeah never went down. Yeah, he was a tease every year, and it's because of that shot rate. We love the, we love to see the shot rate. 
and uh, I think he was on those young Carolina teams with a lot of hype. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're only so, kind of living up to that hype. Yeah. Except him. I guess he was a little older. He was a couple <laughs> years older. And like, you know, shots for my money are the most important stat. Uh, oh, yeah. I thought Tory Krug was supposed to run the power play there. I think he is. He's in St. Lou. I think he's running it. I thought that's what we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Two of them. I yeah, think Fox not scoring. Fox not scoring. And he's just getting ice time. He scored two non power play goals, it would seem. And uh, but Krug only really good, has right? one power play point, which is a little bit uh, disappointing. Yeah, he's been like uh, under. He's been underwhelming. Yeah, St. Louis have been underwhelming. They don't score. St. Louis can't score this year. Hoffman is a bad landing spot for Hoffman, who's a guy that I really like. He's been bad. Yeah, and he wanted to make his money. He was looking for a contract. A first round draft pick in our league. It's too early to say any of this stuff, guys. I mean, new player, new team, new, um, like new system, no training camp, like. I don't know if any of the things that we're seeing, well, I definitely don't believe any of the things that we're seeing to date are real. Like Toffoli, um, Tyler Myers, no way. Oh, like, yeah. The big guys are going to step up soon. I think, yeah, that, well, I mean, the big guys are going to step up. I'd be interested to see. I think Tyler Toffoli might have some staying power. Um, I agree with that. I agree with that. But I don't think he's top 10 by the end of the year, for sure. No. If if people are taking a lot of shots, that's generally repeatable. But if somebody scores five goals over a two game period, it's just yeah. it's just a blip, you know. Like or like uh, Myers has like twenty penalty minutes. Oh well, the penalty minutes yeah. are, are weighing things so crazy. They had Bobby Ryan high on the list for for a day there. Yeah, Booby Ryan. Boob. The boobs. The boob. <laughs> the boobs. <laughs> <laughs> they have boobs. Oh man! Yeah, uh, Hoffman was first round draft pick in our league. Don't yeah, I know your your brother. That's why your brother has nine power play points because he picked <laughs> Hoffman before Malkin. Before Malkin. Oh, before every anybody else in the entire world. Yeah, anyone right? could have done. Oh my god! <laughs> no one was looking at him there. I will say that. No, well, I guess. I picked Jonathan Huberdeau, the pick after. It's like... <laughs> oh, geez, Louise. <laughs> Taylor Hall, three picks later. Oh, my God. Well, Tristan, God. you asked him if it was a mistake right after it, he did it. Yeah, I did. Is, <laughs> is it not a mistake? Yeah. It's got to be a mistake. No, no, no. you got to be kidding. you got to be kidding me. Well, I just figured, you know, he has all those troubles with the the ui and everything and every year there's something he complains about does anybody <laughs> in their leagues have that somebody that's a com- constant complainer way 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 complete john oh i keep getting disconnected from the draft fifty dollars is too much can i pay nice. my league can i pay my <laughs> league dues in gold bullion or bitcoin <laughs> bless his heart yeah, he's he's in for the the raise, so we should uh, set a vote for on our in our league, and everybody else should do. This oh, Nick do. is. Well, he's not, but Mary Lynn is. His wife is. So business is good. Yeah, business yeah. is good. You gotta you gotta raise the funds. I spend too much time looking at it to not have oh, it be worth a little more. Hundred bucks. Inflation. Yeah, it's gonna be hundred bucks. Nine years. Inflation. Sure, right? Inflation, like, baby. Think about it. Yeah. Fifty bucks, bucks ten years ago. Like, come on. Well, Man. I mean, we were all also in university, and we don't have that much more money, but we have some <laughs> disposable income. I mean, I'm sure we can get to 75 bucks. Yeah. Be- theater school band. Yeah, One I'm the here in theater school. Was, uh, theater Steve, was Steve, and, and Steve is a lawyer now, so if he um, gives us any shit about not paying for a $100 league, I'm going to go into it. <laughs> yeah, Steve, you're you hear, you hear that, Steve? Yeah, you know you can hear that, Steve. It's two hundred for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Over his cold dead body. <laughs> I'll donate you twenty five bucks to get you halfway there. The rest is on you. Okay, so everybody, um, who on on your teams or team, whichever you prefer, who are you like most pleasantly surprised with so far? A few little pleasant surprises. 
Chrissy, go first. I'll go second. I got to open up my team. If you guys have the answer ready to go, give her, give her a go. Actually, what? I can do it now. Chikrin. <laughs> Chikrin for me. Oh, yeah. Chikrin's the defenseman been on good. Arizona. That's the answer. So I drafted him because I hoped that he would take the power play. Um,. Which I don't know if he's done. He's got a couple of. Power I think he's points. he's on number two. I've been watching some of the Phoenix games, and uh, actually he may be on number one now because OEL's out. OEL is injured. He he's got a couple of power play points, uh, but he's got decent time and he's getting some peripherals, so he's been better than I expected. So he's my pleasant surprise. All right, That's that. Mikey. I'm sorry, I. Uh... Have uh, I was not paying attention. I was looking at some stats. What what is the question? Yeah, last in the stat. Who's your ple- What are you pleasantly surprised about? Who who on your team is a pleasant surprise? Who on my team? Yeah. is a pleasant surprise. Okay, one second. I will go with uh, Bo Horvat. Bo Horvat's Bo- been amazing. Yeah, yeah, Bo Horvat, a bright spot. Yeah, he's been amazing on a uh, Vancouver team that hasn't been good. Um, Bo Horvat has eight points. Um, he's taken 20 shots uh, in the first... I think they played seven games, actually, so they are game in hand to most play, uh, most teams. He's got four power play points. I'm happy with that. Uh, but he was good last year, too. He's been kind of... He's been growing as a player uh, year over year. He's been knocking on that and, door. Yeah, I yeah. like his stuff. I had him in BSDs last year. His only problem was that he's center only, right? He is a center only, yeah. But he uh, he's taken. He seems to have taken another step ahead this year. And he's born in '95, which would make him what? 26. Yeah, he's young. He's not 25, old. 26. Yeah. So he's right in that. He's right in that sweet spot for age, which you like to see. Yeah. Um. Yeah, oh, you have to get over there, Elias Pettersson. Whoa. Yeah, he's no, poo, yeah, poo, poo, poo. Hey, trash. Think about Doesn't shoot enough. It's That's a good thing he was because if Larry had a good week at a Pettersson too, like I would be buried. Oh, yeah. I would yeah. be so like he would have eighty plus points this week. Yeah, or if he had taken like any other player but Pettersson with the first overall pick. Yeah, you, you, he, his team. Yeah, he would have had an even better week. Pedersen, so my issue with Pedersen is that he's a he's a points only guy, or I guess more succinctly, he doesn't shoot enough. Yeah. So we're hit. So like, if you're a low event player and your team is uh, on a down streak, or if you're on, in a slump, you disappear. Yeah. On you, the stat sheet. Yeah. That All is right. the risk of centers, and that is why, under very rare circumstances. It, it feels like you shouldn't be taking the center with your first pick, but if your league has a couple keepers, you're probably going to want a top flight center as one of those keepers because the, 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 the cream of the crop quickly dissipates into just like a sea of 50 and 60 point guys that yep. don't really shoot all that much and are basically indeterminable from the other. Yeah, they're the same. They're replacement level. They're, based, they're just all the same. Yeah. So yeah, it does help to get guys above above that, you know, like Crosby or it's it's good to have the two elite centers. I would say. I think two elite centers is the way to go. This year, I don't have. Well, I, I have one, but getting the second one was so uh, was much more difficult because I just thought this year it felt like the time when some point getting defensemen would be. It felt of a higher value. To it was more of a priority for me this year. And I'm hoping that works out, but it's, you know, the thing about your defense is that all, that's also where you want some of your grit and your grime coming from. Yeah. Like you, you it's know, it's great to have a bunch of power play point guys, but if no one's hitting and no one's blocking, that is going to be two categories that you are stale in. So Bev, if, if you don't keep Kane, I assume you're obviously you're going to keep Matthews. You're going to keep Ovechkin. Yeah, I think Ovechkin so, still, you know, next year is still keeper quality for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think so too. So let's just say you don't keep Kane. Is it uh, Kale or Quinn that you keep? Well, I think right now I was thinking uh, it'd be Kale McCarr. Who knows at the end of this year how that goes? It also. 
I kind of drafted those guys. I wasn't necessarily like sure of the direction or what like level my team was going to be. So I wanted two of them in case there was someone I wanted to trade for later in the year. So I think it's a good idea if I have a high, if I have a keeper who's a high point getting defenseman, but I also might try and flip one of those guys into a high event forward. Because I just think those high event forwards are basically, irre you know, there's always going to be a defenseman who gets a lot of points available. There's not always a guy who does what something like what Brady Kachuk can do. True. Oh. There's not always a guy that can do some players in the league. Yeah. But I, I'm sort of leaning towards it being Kale McCarr. I mean, if Evander Kane does as he's been doing, I. I'd have a hard. I definitely have to wait till the next fall to determine on if I'm mm. going to get rid of him or not. To tell me, yeah. is it Kale McCarr because he's taller than Quinn Hughes? Is he taller? Yeah, for sure, he is. That's what. Yeah, that's and, a big knock on Quinn Hughes, and that's a big knock that's always been like he's he's a shorter defenseman. Mm. So everyone kind of like looks at him as, ah, oh, well, Quinn Hughes, you know, I don't know. And yet he comes like out and scores 58 points or whatever the fuck he did yeah. last year is like the 25th ranked player in our league this year so far, you know, like, I think they're going to be, I think the two boys are going to go off at some point. So it's really going to be whoever, whoever gets the more points and looks like it's it. like Kale McCarr is on a better long-term power play. I think that's pretty, oh, yeah. pretty yeah. undeniable. If Kale, if Kale is like the man this year and further locks down his role, like, yeah, you're looking at a eight, five, six, seven year run possibly yeah of, of you know above average production and Man, that's boy. always what you're looking for and drover you got on the lafreniere train has that been has that been Ooh, that is juice. that is there are uh multiple wheels off the track right now <laughs> and we are on the brink of disaster with the with the lafreniere train that's how that's going it's um He's done absolutely nothing, and um, I don't even know that he's looked very good. So I was watching him a little bit tonight, and I, I couldn't see him out there. Um, but, you know, at a certain point, you got to invest in a rookie and kind of hang on to him because you don't have any good keepers. And, you know, I could drop him, and he could have a good week and never look back. You know, so yeah. like you never really know when those guys are going to do that. Like, I, you know, me and Chris are both, we lament over this regularly. I would say almost every other night uh, when we're playing PlayStation, we both had McKinnon and dropped him. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like and dropped, I, I, dropped? I traded. Uh, well, no, I didn't drop, drop him. Okay. I, I won the league. Um, the year before and then i uh dropped him and for kept ristolainen instead oh and then oh hold on now but then tristan <laughs> drafted mckinnon no i uh, didn't even worse even worse he was drafted yeah, by, no he was drafted by luke who traded right. for me two in week three for a third round draft pick and then was out of the league two weeks later yeah <laughs> Yeah. And then he scored a typical ninety points. Yeah. Disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> one, of the, one of the worst trades that ever went down. Well, uh, he didn't like he didn't start the year hot that year, so like it wasn't super out of out of question to like draft the trade for like a second or third for him. And then all of a sudden, halfway through the year, he was like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna score ninety points this year." <laughs> Just gonna yeah, go ahead and pop up to a fresh late. ninety. Is he? Is he in the conversation with? Uh, with Connor as the best in the league, like, Jensen, yeah, but... I think so, probably. But I mean, I don't know, is he doing as good this year? Did he just have an amazing year last year? Like, how is that gonna go? We're talking can about he repeat he it, yeah, he can definitely repeat it because he did it two years in a row, three years in a row. He had 97, 99, 93 points, and 93 points last year in 69 games. Oh, yeah, yeah it sounds pretty he repeatable. And he had 25 and 15 in the postseason. Like, he, he's a bona fide superstar. Yeah, of course he is. Yeah. Three straight years, 90 plus points. 
Yeah, so I mean, probably. I think he's probably up there with uh, McDavid. Then. I don't, like I don't McDavid. think. I don't think he's McDavid. I think McDavid's just. He's on another level from everybody else. I didn't like Crosby either when he was supposed to be the best. I guess I just don't like the best player in the league. It's just a thing. Yeah, it's hard not to. I came around on Crosby when he won the Olympic gold, I think, at Vancouver. That's when I became a fan. Yeah. 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 (laughs) And now I really like him. I thought he was kind of a sook, but, like, he definitely plays a real hard-nosed game now and just has, like, so much of so much slick grinding talent and i feel like if he wanted to score another 15 points in a year he could but i think he wants to win games and not burn his knees out yeah i think he's like yager he reminds except for maybe a bit more grit to him than yager he plays a similar style to how yager plays like oh wait yager yeah like skill but it can play along the hash marks really well you know and down low which is you know to be able to move your hands that quick down there is pretty fucking skilled. I think Connor McDavid's definitely on another planet than everybody else, though. I don't think there's anybody else in the league that's like him. I think people can rack up points like him, but I don't think there's anybody else that, you know. Yeah, his he's skating a, is just stupid good. He's just, he's a highlight reel all the time. And I feel like if he wanted to score 150 points in a year, he could score 150 mm-hmm. points in a year. And is this the year that, like, Matthews really puts a team on his back? Or do you think you're going to – is the Leafs going to be more of a committee thing? I, I like the commitment to the defense. Like, he's getting more hits and more blocks than I've seen out of him early. And no doubt, like, Matthews could be a top goal scorer. But I don't think he's ever going to be a top point producer. He – uh I don't think he's looked that good this year so far from watching the games on the eye test only. I don't know how he's been in fantasy. Uh, he Well, he, he missed his last game. I think he's doing pretty good. I think he's at a point a game or if not, like either just below or just over. He's been shooting a nice bit. He's I've liked him in the minutes. game, but he has gone on. He's definitely gone unrewarded a fair amount. He's still gotten his points, but I feel like he's not as dangerous looking as he should be, or he can be, or probably yeah. he will be soon. I think they've I asked mean, him that's... to commit to the defense, and that might be affecting some of the some of the you know waiting by the blue line trying to go in and get a shot. And that might happen. He might lose out on a few goals if he's trying to win a few more games. I mean, I think it's also anyway. it's also a weird season, you know. It's like he's back up in Toronto from Arizona. It's middle of the year. Uh, he's probably away from all of his, from the most part, all of his family and stuff. I think it's just a weird season. So it's a slower start for a person who's six six points in six games. Yeah, you know, like yeah, it's not all that slow. But if we keep, if we keep it in perspective, I think he had like more than a point per game last year, and he missed time. So he was like, because he's Band Aid boy, so he probably he probably would have been like up there in the ninety point category with people last year. Yeah, I think him or, and Murner have, even though they they're getting their points, have not looked as sharp as they can, and maybe that's just because I guess the skill guys take longer to hone in, and be as sharp as they need to be. Um, but I don't know. It's just the feeling I've gotten from them. I, I feel like other players have been uh, better to their caliber on the Maple Leafs than they have. Like Tavares. Tavares had an excellent start to the year. Um, yeah, he's been looking pretty good. Yeah, he's looked good. Which was which is good to see because he was not good last year, I didn't, I didn't think. For large portions of the year. I don't think Matthews is going to carry them on his back because he's on a team where he doesn't need to. There's too many. There's a lot of, lot of, lot of cooks in the kitchen over there, and that's part of the issue, I think. Yeah, there definitely is a, a bevy of offensive threats on the Leafs, and they're probably all taken from his points a little bit. Yeah, he had 80 points in 70 games last year. The the dude was on pace for like 95 or something. You yeah. know, like <clears throat> he's fucking he's sick. He's just injured 10, 20 games every year. Yeah. Little prone, little prone to cold streaks. Um, how's Morgan Riley been? He had three points tonight, uh, but that's really 
that's that's what I drafted them expecting to see more regularly on the offense that they have, and it just hasn't come to be up until now. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, their offense looked a little better today. Uh, you like to see Morgan Riley get in multi-point games because that means he's getting into the rush instead of trying to play defense, which he's really bad at. <laughs> so, um, yeah. My last so fantasy question rush. is, have you seen any good team names this year? What's been the funniest team names? <laughs> I don't know. I have been looking through other leagues. I finally changed Miso Hornkvist from another league because <laughs> I haven't had Hornkvist in a couple years. <laughs> And uh, it, it was just losing. It was losing a little bit of its class. Uh, but I think there's a lot of Drover, Drover has changed his name to Jeff Farter. I like Jeff Farter. Jeff Farter. Larry 316. Yeah. He's been farting. I like Jason's man. team. A yeah, really. Jason. I like how Jace, Jace, Jace's team was called, like, something else and then he was like no that's too much a little too much character <laughs> yeah. yeah i just want to go as neutral with it as possible it was called ben sandine ear all day the worst yeah <laughs> name a poor <laughs> pun like ear, the ear all day point uh was what lost everybody <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's the no regret skis in one of my other leagues, and uh, I think Dave has the grossest team names of all of anybody I've ever seen, so I can't even repeat. What are they? Via got... Getty? Well, it's oh, first, what was the first one? First time, no lube. Second time, no lube. Oh, yeah, this. <laughs> Third time, same as first. That's lube, wasn't it? Well, yeah, something like that. I don't even know, man. I mean, it is suitable lube, because he definitely got fucked in the ass both those years, so. <laughs> And his team name in another one is Kendall Coins Jill. Like that's where he is now. Bunch of shit bags was his team last year. Really? Like that one. Yeah, just really? n- n- naming them all out of the, just knocking the names at the park. Yeah. It was second like time, lots of loop. Bags. Thanks, Steve. Oh my gosh. Well, unless anyone has any uh, closing remarks or, or stories on fantasy uh, <laughs> that they would like to get to. I'd Ooh. say that's pretty good for a week. Um, I've got Chris's hot schedule tip. Oh, yeah. I haven't um, looked up schedule. Yeah, let's get a schedule Chris's tip. Hot pick. Chris's hot Tampa. pick for the week. Yeah, Give this it. is my hot uh, schedule tip for the week. Tampa Bay are playing only – well, they're playing three games, but two of those games are against Carolina, and it's looking like Carolina's games are going to be canceled. So if you got any peripheral guys, maybe like a Tyler Johnson or even a plot maybe – uh, you might want to drop him for a streamer. Oh, Ooh. yeah. And this yeah. is Chris's hot schedule tip. I, that That's a hot schedule tip because there's going to be games postponed and your lineup has to be fluid. You got you got to be willing to make those changes, I think, and uh, jump on them. Well, that's been good. Is he going to be drop. filling in for uh, Kucherov? Like who's, who's shouldering the Kucherov load? Amcos. Good question. I don't know what's going I on. I guess the top line is Point Palat Stamkos, is it? Yeah, it's Stamkos. Uh, okay, yeah. I would wouldn't recommend dropping Palat if that's the case, but maybe <laughs> Killorn or Sorelli. People like roster Sorelli, Killorn. I think you can maybe drop one of those guys. And it's still oh, looking yeah. like those games are going to be po- postponed. You're saying? I think so. Yeah, jeez, Carolina just can't catch a break. But they're gonna, man, they're gonna be playing like six games a week one of these weeks. It's gonna be, yeah. it's gonna be awesome. Tampa too. Tampa have also missed uh, two games already, and Dallas. Yeah, Dallas, yeah. Dallas got fucked. So I think that is a thing to really keep track of: is how many as as you know the season nears its end, how many makeup games are we gonna see? We might see some more of those five game weeks. Which around like playoff Winnipeg. time is just going to be huge. Winnipeg last week. Did Stastny do anything? So Winnipeg played five games this week. Tito Stastny get to was... the sub Liz. <laughs> what did Stastny do? Nothing. Well, Stastny's no. going to be doing less than nothing now. 
Yeah, he really is. We're probably going to see, you're right, Evan, we're going to see more five-game weeks. Like, I would say every year, from what I remember, you, you probably see one five-game week a year. But, yeah, for per team. Man, Nate, like, per season, there's not a lot of five-game weeks. But this year, there's going to be a lot. And so sure. all of a sudden, picking up those right wingers who play five minutes and get five or six hits and maybe a scrap, <laughs> like if you can get a few of those in on a Monday, actually, it seems like even the weekly schedule's gone. Like today was Sunday and had way more games than yesterday, which than is yesterday. Saturday, yeah. which is a really unique thing to see. And that probably fucks with uh, people like Anaheim and, and Washington who usually play on the off nights. Yep. Makes them less val- valuable. As if Anaheim could get any less valuable. Oh, They're yeah. Oh, my God. And here's Tristan's hot tip for uh, his brother. Don't pick up Jesse Puglierby because you saw he might play <laughs> a little bit. I'd say that's a done deal. That's a good 4.30 day. tomorrow morning, Jesse Puglierby <laughs> will be on Nick's team. Yeah. Who's uh, who's everybody staying up to grab? I got injury trouble. I do have to grab someone. I don't know if I'll be staying up. I I'm gonna be honest that. with you. Here's here's my hot take. I uh, I can't. I don't think it's. I think it's too early to be. Every all the good players are picked, and it's too early to go dropping people for really crappy players right now. Yeah, but I already got I don't a few think, crappy players. I don't think anybody's showing their cards yet. Is what I'm saying. I'm like the who the really can be picked up now i think the first round first wave is over and from there we'll see yeah i think people have to earn their earn their place on a consistent basis now because the cream of the crop waiver wire is in most cases totally depleted because a lot of a lot of leagues like ours have given extra roster slots or extra moves so therefore there is on the waiver wire in yeah. general Oh, yeah. Less than usual. BSDs is really both of the fantasy leagues I'm in. The waiver wire is empty, basically. But For it sure. will be interesting to see what happens tomorrow morning. Any waiver claims going through? Uh, I don't have any in. I don't have any claims on anybody in any of my league. Any no, of my no but actually, come to think of it, I might because if it's just going to use the move automatically tomorrow, and I'm last in priority so i i have no i can't lose waiver priority at all so it's actually a free move well if you're going for anybody jones, even worthwhile on waivers jones jones no jones is just you can just pick jones. him up now oh, oh okay okay yeah that's I true uh, i actually there is no one on I'm waivers that I'm player on waivers who's any good in our particular league goose egg oh sorry egg, i'm looking at the other egg league. carlo yeah goose egg akita yeah. goose egg yeah. He's got the claim in on Gusev, boys. Cool. <laughs> Poor old Gusev just can't catch a break. If you're in a ten team league though, there's lots of players are still around. Like uh if you're if you're playing in a ten team league, that is. Kevin Hayes will probably still be around, Jonathan Duran, Samuel Gerard, those guys will probably all still be kicking around that you can pick up. Pavelski's Goose probably still around. Tonight. Goose egg. I guess. Oh, here's here's a guy I just wanted to ask about real quick because uh, what do we think of of Bockfist on Chicago? Like, is mm. is this a case of someone has to get the points, so he's gonna be like moderately useful? I mean, as long as he's passing the puck to Patrick Kane on a power play, you got to figure he's got the got to get the occasional point. No, he's gotten lucky. I mean, I think he's young and small too. I think he's got getting like twelve minutes a game total, maybe or something, maybe fifteen, sixteen. Mm-hmm. He's got, what, like five shots through the whole year? How many shots has he taken? Five shots. Yeah, five shots. He's taken five shots in seven games. Yeah, he's, that's pretty he's gross. Not... Yeah, that's it. Uh, that's it. That's my hot tips for this year, for this week. Yeah, we'll Don't see pick if... up Blue Yerby, Nick, if you're listening. <laughs> Stay tuned till for next Sunday, Tristan's big tip. Tristan's big, big, big tip. tip. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, boys, for being on uh, being on the stream, and uh, thanks everybody who tuned in for a bit. I see Liz, my cousin Steve, Steve Power. Uh, thanks, Trissy, for throwing in a couple subs. If anyone's watching, you can uh, sub or like or follow or do any of that good stuff. 
If you got Amazon Prime, you can give me a sub true that. And uh, good stream. Later on, gang. Peace out.